Wonderful, wonderful. Just want to thank Sister Rebecca and Sister Heather for agreeing to share their talent and gift from God. Can you reach my friend? So remember, sharing is not just about physical either. The main aim is to help winning souls for God. And through your sharing and caring, you may reach someone for God. Okay. Just gonna reshare. Trying to find where I was. Are you seeing my screen? Yes, we yes. are. Yeah. Wonderful. So caring in reverse is not just about the little children, the widows, and the other vulnerable people or seniors caring for us when we should be caring for them. It is also us as children caring for our parents mm. when they become ill. So children depend on parents for care, protection, and guidance. But when our seniors become really ill with dementia, they are like children again, and they depend on their adult children for care, protection, and guidance. Mm. The term once a man, twice a child is very real. So when one has dementia, whether Alzheimer's or other conditions that is causing this dementia, they are like children, they need protection, they need guidance, and they need care. Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is a brain disease that causes a slow decline in memory, thinking, and your reasoning skills. It's one of the most dreaded neurodegenerative diseases. It's still without a cure. It's believed to be caused by the accumulation of two main types of proteins in the brain. These clumps of protein, they're built up in the junctions between the nerve cells. And these nerve cells are called neurons. There are two types of protein. The amyloid protein deposits in the brain to form plaques while the tau protein deposits to form tangles. And it's the tangle and the plaques in the brain that leads to significant inflammation, damages our brain cells, and leads to dementia. Mm -hmm. So as I've said before, the Alzheimer's disease is a degenerative brain disease that slowly destroys our memory and our thinking skills. It, it, caused, it is caused by the complex brain changes. Your brain cells actually shrink. Changes in the brain now is what is leading to the dementia. And you may want to know what's the difference between Alzheimer's and dementia. Alzheimer's is the most common form of dementia. It's not, not well. Alzheimer's and dementia, it's, they're not normal processes of aging. It's a specific disease, while dementia is the umbrella term that describes what happens when you have all these different kinds of diseases leading to losing the loss of your memory and your thinking skills and other faculties. So then what is dementia? Dementia is a clinical syndrome or set of symptoms represented by a decline in your cognitive functions, your mental abilities, when it's severe enough to interfere with your daily life, your activities of daily living. 
Dementia occurs when the nerve cells in the brain become non-functional. When the nerve cells are called neurons, lose the ability to communicate with each other in the brain, they eventually die. There are several causes of dementia. Alzheimer's is the most common. We have reversible causes of dementia and these can be cured. We have irreversible causes of dementia. Most types are irreversible. The treatment, because there's no cure for these irreversible dementias, the aim is reducing symptoms and trying to slow the progression. There is a constant fight in the research, in the health research, trying, there's a race to trying to find the cure for dementia, just like the, uh, or for Alzheimer's disease and, and the other irreversible causes of dementia. And um, just like the race is going on to find the cure for cancer. Dementia is a slow process, it, it progresses slowly. It affects how you communicate, it affects how you reason, it affects how much you can remember and your normal thinking and judgment. And repeating myself so that it's clear, it affects how you perform simple tasks such as bathing and eating. Some of the reversible causes of dementia are Medical conditions such as depression. Depression can lead to dementia or cause dementia. But once you treat the depression, the dementia goes. There is a condition called normal pressure hydrocephalus where there's swelling in the brain and excess fluid. Once they put a shunt in the brain to get rid of that excess fluid, then the dementia is reversed. The dementia is cured. Multivitamins such as thiamine, especially in those who drink alcohol or um, vitamin B12. So B12 and thiamine, that's B1. If you are deficient in these vitamins, you can, it can lead to dementia. Also other metabolic problems such as liver disease. People who are chronic alcoholic and they drink until their liver become damaged, then they may develop what is called liver disease encephalopathy. And that can lead to confusion because the liver is not getting rid of toxins in the, brain, in the body. So the toxins build up, goes to the brain and can cause dementia. Now the irreversible dementia disorders. Alzheimer's disease is the number one cause. We have vascular dementia, dementia with Lewy bodies, Parkinson's disease dementia, frontotemporal dementia, the Kutzfeldt-Jacob disease, and mixed dementia. Dementia range, ranges in the severity. You have the milder stage when it is just beginning to affect a person's function, or you have the moderate or midpoint, they can still perform some activities of daily living. And then we have the severe stage when the person must depend completely on others to help with their basic activities. Just a sidebar, because Lewy dementia, a lot of people will hear about it and they're wondering what is this? Lewy body dementia is a disease associated with a different form of protein from the Alzheimer's disease. And this protein is called the alpha synucleic protein and it's, it deposits in the brain. It's called Lewy bodies. Now this protein when deposited in the brain affects chemicals in the brain whose changes in turn can lead to problems with your thinking, your movement and memory and other skills. Then we have vascular dementia. Now this is common, more common as well in our race because vascular dementia and cognitive impairment arise from conditions such as strokes, vascular brain injuries, such as TIA, which is a mini form of strokes, diabetes, 
hypertension, high cholesterol. Also, a high risk for stroke is when you have a condition called atrial fibrillation, and that's a problem where the rhythm of your heart, your heart is beating very fast, and it can send blood clot up into the brain, leading to stroke, and this can cause um, vascular dementia. It is irreversible. Once the damage is done in the brain by strokes or other heart diseases, then this dementia cannot be reversed. Let's look at a few statistics on Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is currently ranked as the sixth leading cause of death in the US. It's ranked third in line behind heart disease and cancer as the causes of death in or older adults. According to the Alzheimer's Association of the US, it's estimated that more than 5 million Americans, most of them age 65 or older, may have, demen uh, may have the Alzheimer's dementia. In Canada, a whopping 747,000 people are living with Alzheimer's disease or another form of dementia. Some risk factors of Alzheimer's Disease, age. The risk of Alzheimer's increases with age um, because we have vascular dementia and several others dementia also increases with age. It is a general risk factor, even though, as I've said before, it is not a normal process of aging. So in other words, not all our seniors will have dementia. One in nine people over the age of 65 has Alzheimer's. One in three seniors dies with Alzheimer's or another form of dementia. So you see, the older you are, the more at risk for developing this disease. There's a condition called atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis is the thickening, it's a tongue tire I know, is the thickening and hardening of the artery walls due to plaque built up. So your blood vessels, when you have high cholesterol and you have um, building up of the fat in the blood vessels, it can lead to the thickening and hardening of these arteries. And the plaque is made, as I've said, from cholesterol, fat, calcium, and other substances in the blood. The buildup leads to narrowing of the arteries and it interferes with blood flow. If the brain is not getting enough oxygen, then you can end up with strokes as well. There's this chemical called homocysteine. It, as a matter of fact, it is a naturally occurring building block of protein. It's an amino acid. So if doctor does a blood test and they see a high level of homocysteine, you can, it's a high risk. People with a high level, they're at a high risk for diseases such as, such as Alzheimer's, vascular dementia, um, cognitive impairment of, in general. And a high level of homocysteine is also a high risk for strokes. Then we look at this common one, diabetes. Diabetes may be associated with an increased risk of developing both Alzheimer's and vascular dementia. And I kept mentioning vascular dementia as well, because as I said before, it's one, it's very common in African-Americans. Diabetes is also a high risk factor for you having atherosclerosis and stroke. So it's like a triple one. All of these conditions can contribute drastically to us developing vascular disease and vascular dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Another risk factor is sedentary lifestyle, lack of exercise. Lack of exercise is one of the number one causes of chronic illnesses. Cannot speak about that enough. We have to get out there and exercise. Isolation, believe it or not, in the long-term care facility, um, 
COVID-induced isolation has caused mild cognitive impairment to progress to moderate and even severe dementia. So a lot of the seniors who were functional at home are being transferred now to the um, long-term care facilities because they used to be able to go, they were up and about, they were attending um, seniors club, but because of COVID, they're not able to socialize. And this lack of socialization, we're social beings, this lack of socialization has led to um, their dementia getting worse inadequate sleep. If you practice getting less than six sleep hours of sleep per day, you are on a roller coaster for developing Alzheimer's or other dementia disease. So please try and get at least six hours. I want to say, make sure you get eight hours of sleep, but I know with some people's lifestyle, it's not possible. So shoot for eight hours at least. I would say shoot for 10 hours of sleep, but you are at a very high risk if you are getting less than six hours sleep per night. Now turn with me, let's watch this, this, this video and it will explain how Alzheimer's disease develops in the brain. <clears throat> Courtesy of the National Institute. In healthy people, all sensations, movements, hear? thoughts, memories, and feelings are the result of signals that pass through billions of nerve cells or neurons in the brain. Neurons constantly communicate with each other through electrical charges that travel down axons, causing the release of chemicals across tiny gaps to neighboring neurons. Other cells in the brain, such as astrocytes and microglia, clear away debris and help keep neurons healthy. In a person with Alzheimer's disease, the most basic form of dementia, toxic changes in the brain destroy this healthy balance. These changes may occur years, even decades, before the first signs of dementia. Researchers believe that this process involves two proteins, called beta amyloid and tau, which somehow become toxic to the brain. It appears that abnormal tau accumulates, eventually forming tangles inside neurons. And beta amyloid clumps into plaques, which slowly build up between neurons. As the level of amyloid reaches a tipping point, there is a rapid spread of tau throughout the brain. But tau and beta amyloid may not be the only factors involved in Alzheimer's. Other changes that affect the brain may also play a role over time. The vascular system may fail to deliver sufficient blood and nutrients to the brain. The brain may lack the glucose needed to power its activity. Chronic inflammation sets in as microglial cells fail to clear away debris and astrocytes react to distressed microglia. Eventually, neurons lose their ability to communicate. As neurons die, the brain shrinks, beginning in the hippocampus, a part of the brain important to learning and memory. People may begin to experience memory loss, impaired decision-making, and language problems. As more neurons die throughout the brain, a person with Alzheimer's gradually loses the ability to think remember, make decisions, and function independently. Achieving a deeper understanding of the molecular and cellular mechanisms and how they may interact is vital to the development of effective therapies. Much progress has been made in identifying various underlying factors. Advances in brain imaging allow us to see the course of plaques and tangles in the living brain. Blood and fluid biomarkers are providing insights about when the disease starts and how it progresses. More is also known about the genetic underpinnings of the disease and how they can affect particular biological pathways. These advances enable the development and testing of promising new therapies, including drugs that reduce or clear the increase of tau and amyloid proteins in the brain, therapies targeting the vascular system, glucose metabolism, and inflammation, and lifestyle interventions like exercise or diet. 
and behavioral approaches like social engagement that may enhance brain health. Research is moving quickly, ever closer to the day when we can delay or even prevent the devastation of dementia. This is what the brain looks like. So on the left is a healthy brain. On the right is a shrunken Alzheimer's disease brain. So the onset is insidious. That means it slowly progresses over time and you have to be keen to notice the early stages. Um, most people in the later stage of life over the age of 65 may first notice episodic memory and word recall. But in the later stages, they'll be looking at behavioral and psychiatric symptoms of dementia, such as aggression and anxiety and um, even delirious behavior. So for a person to receive a diagnosis, they usually experience two or more of these symptoms, the following symptoms. I am cognizant of my time. So I will be really going through a little faster because I don't wanna keep you here all day. So symptoms of dementia, we have memory loss. The memory loss is a common symptom. A person with dementia may find it difficult to recall information they recently learned such as dates or events or new information. Difficulty planning or problem solving. We may find it difficult to follow a plan such as a recipe when cooking or directions when driving. So we have problem solving. They may also get more challenging such as when adding up numbers to pay bills. A person with dementia may find it difficult to complete tasks they regularly do, such as making up a cup of tea or getting to a family location. And this difficulty with familiar tasks could happen at work or home. They can become confused about time and place. They can make it hard to judge. They can make it very hard to judge the passing of time. People may also forget where they are at certain times. They may find it hard to understand events in the future or even past events. People with dementia have challenges understanding visual information, such as the clock. I'm sure you heard, you heard, you've heard about the test where they ask you to draw the clock, right? And to identify the time. Someone who usually drives or cycle may find it difficult to, to, to drive or to, to write. And writing skills become less legible. Person with dementia may find it hard to engage in conversation. They find it hard to write and to read. They misplace things. A person with dementia may not be able to remember where they leave everyday objects, such as a remote control, important documents, keys, cash. Misplacing possessions can be frustrating and may mean that they accuse their family members of stealing. Poor judgment or decision-making. It can be hard for someone with dementia to understand what is fair and reasonable. This may mean they pay too much for things, so they may spend their money unwisely. Some people with dementia may also pay less attention to keeping themselves clean and presentable. So family members and friends may have to help them with dressing and picking out their clothes and taking a bath. They start withdrawing from social, social activities. They may become uninterested in socializing with people, whether at home or even at work, So, if they're still working. 
the person who used to be lively and talkative may become withdrawn, may stop doing hobbies or sports that they were involved and used to love. Their personality or moods, a person with dementia may experience the mood swings or personality changes. So for example, this happy-go-lucky person may become irritable, depressed, fearful, or anxious. And they may start behaving inappropriately. Now, these are signs that we would be looking out for. So all those symptoms and others. From early, once you're seeing those signs in our seniors or even middle-aged people, then they can get testing to see if they're actually developing dementia. So while medications cannot cure it, as yet, there are some medications there that can slow the process. They may not be as effective as we want them to be, but they do have some effect. Steps to maintain your cognitive health. We have adequate exercise. So at least 150 minutes per week, we need to exercise. So five, 30 minutes for five days per week. If you're not able to do five, you could do 60 minutes, three days per week, or 45 minutes, three days per week. Eat a healthy diet that is rich in fruits and vegetables. Spend time with family and friends. Keep your mind active. And we need to control our chronic illnesses, hypertension and diabetes and cholesterol, those three especially. We need to pay close attention. Keep your blood pressure and cholesterol under control by taking your medications and asking the right questions when you visit your, your doctor. Far too often, we don't ask the right questions. If you have been diagnosed with an illness, research, do your research and have your questions ready when you visit, when you visit the doctor. Maintain a healthy body weight. Stop smoking, get help for depression, avoid alcohol, get adequate sleep. So in the interest of time, I will move right ahead to looking at some caregiver's tips that I want to leave with you. 115, Doc. Did you hear me? You have yes. A... Yes. How many minutes do I have? Do I have 10 minutes to wrap up? About one, actually. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So provide simple instructions. People with dementia best understand clear one-step communication. Approach calmly and speak slowly when you're speaking to people with dementia. Plan your routine. Some tasks such as bathing or medical appointments, you would wanna um, to do it in the mornings. Take your time. A person with Alzheimer's may take longer, so take time with them. Involve the person. Allow them to help make their decision as best as they can by laying out their clothes and they can tell you what they want to wear. Don't force them. Be patient. Provide choices, but not too many. So you would ask them simple questions for drinking, hot or cold. Do you want to go to, to a walk? for a walk or do you want to watch TV? Give them choices. Limit their napping. If they sleep too long in the day, then they won't sleep at night and they may get their days and nights reversed. Reduce distraction. When they're eating, turn the television off. Help to prevent the falls in risk in your house. Avoid um, the rugs and extension cords. And because we have to treat people with dementia um, like children, you want to lock the cabinets with medications and dangerous chemicals and check the thermostat for hot water. You want to watch them and they need to be supervised. Caregivers, you may have self-care burnout, so you're going to need help. You want to lean on friends and other family members to help when you're 
caring for somebody with dementia. Be patient, be flexible. It can be frustrating. There are brain exercises that you can do even before you get dementia. You wanna exercise your brain after you have um, basically retired. You wanna continue um, increasing your blood flows to your brain because brain exercise reduce dementia. You learn another language if you can. Learn something new every week. Play a brain fitness games. Use your non-dominant hand. Learn to play an instrument. Reduce the, because exercises reduce dementia risk by 30 to 40%. We know to avoid harmful substances and get sufficient sleep. I cannot speak to that enough. All seniors should be periodically assessed for, de de for depression. So if you see somebody getting withdrawn in church, have them assessed. In Wrapping up, I just want to acknowledge the dementia risk factors, um, the dementia um, from Healthline, the Dementia and Alzheimer's Association of America, the Dementia Society of and Alzheimer's Society of Canada, and the Mayo Clinic for the information I've presented today. They are not mine. I have to acknowledge my references. And I want to finish today's presentation by leaving you with God's promises. Isaiah 46, verse 4. Even to your old age, I am he. And even to gray hairs, I will carry you. I have made and I will bear. Even I will carry and will deliver you. Amen. Thank you so much, Emmanuel Worship Center, for having me. Amen. 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 I want to take the time to thank Dr. Dr. Cornish for a wonderful presentation. We really appreciate it. Um, at this time, we'll have the prayer for the nation by Robert Miller. He served as director for the Kingston Campus, Northern Caribbean University, his ear coordinator for Central Jamaica Conference in charge of the Master Guide and Ardeen Elder from Spanish Town, Spanish Town Estate. MPE for St. Catherine, so, Southeastern, and is married to the beautiful Chris, Kirsten, Kristen for over 40 marvelous years. This time. <laughs> Thank you, let us pray. I want to thank you for this opportunity to serve on this Sabbath. I want to thank you for the sermon, Dr. Cornish, and the L tips that was given earlier. Um, Dr. Kennedy, let me thank you for this opportunity. Father, I want to give thee thanks and praises on this your beautiful Sabbath day. We are detained by technology because of the time that we're living in. Father, we just want to praise your name and we want to thank you for the opportunity so we can use technology to worship in this fashion. Mm. This pandemic has come upon us, has caused many pain, has caused many stress, and it has caused many mental illnesses. But Father, we are comforted by the fact that you're God. Yeah. And you're God alone. And there is no problem too big for you to solve. Father, while the world, the world will grapple with new technologies and the world will grapple with new vaccine to cure this pandemic, we are mindful as Christians that you are God and you are the sustainer of everything. Amen. Father, we pray for the frontline workers. Mm. We pray for the nurses, the policemen, women, firemen, everyone that is in the frontline during this time. 
We ask, dear Lord, that you continue to be with them, that you continue to cover them, and that you continue to be that source of strength to them. Father, we bring before the Dr. Kennedy and his team at the Emmanuel Worship Center. At this time, we ask that you be with the leaders of our world church, mm. our conferences, our unions, that you will give them the wisdom, the insight to lead your people mm -hmm. at this time. Yes. Father, we ask that you will use them as an instrument for your people leading the people to the promised land. Mm. And Father, we bring before you the world leaders of all continents and all countries. Mm. That you will continue to be with them, that you will provoke their thoughts and allow them to look heavenwards to for an answer from you. Mm. We don't have the answer, dear Lord, but we are dependent on you to be with us. We're reminded this morning that we need to care for our brothers and sisters. Father, you said in your scripture, Luke 2, verse 52, it's a scripture that I take personally, that I've learned within the Pathfinder movement. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature yes, and in sir. favor with God and man. We ask your Lord that you continue to use us, that you remove from us the heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh. Yeah. Help us, dear Lord, that we may be our brother's keeper, that we may look after each other as though you have shown us while you serve on this earth. Father, we pray for the children. We pray for the families because the devil is moving rampant to destroy the family unit. Right. We pray for everyone that is contemplating the next move. And dear Lord, we ask that you will be with us individually, that you will protect us, that you will give us insight to do what is right and pleasing in thy sight. Mm -hmm. Forgive us of all our many sins, and do not hesitate to grant us what we have forgotten to request from our lips. Father, we ask that when you shall come and this world shall be no more, when we shall be reunited to live with you in heaven, help us, dear Lord, no matter how sinful we are. We ask for your forgiveness and that you'll come and that you'll take us to live with you forever and ever. Be with us now and forevermore is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.